Shure is stranding these camps. Hey there again, the Shure Aeonic 50 was launched in 2020, competing with a handful of super premium Bluetooth headphones like the B0H9, Bowser Wilkins PX7, Masters and Dynamic, MW65, and most recently the Apple AirPods Max and Drop Panda have entered the fray. They recently dropped 40% from £380 to £220. So the question is, are they now worth considering? Sure is a pro audio company founded in 1925, famously producing professional microphones that can be found all over the world. With the Aeonic 50 stated combo of studio quality sound and premium luxury materials, they straddle the pro and consumer audiophile markets, but do they achieve that aim? And are they candidates for the most accurate and truthful sounding Bluetooth headphones in the world? Well, we're going to need to go on a bit of a journey to understand the sound of the Shure Ionic 50 by considering them against icons from these two quite different sectors. The Bayer Dynamic DT990 Pro, professional studio monitor dating back to 1985, and the Sennheiser HD 600 consumer audio file reference from 1997. I'll get more into the sound and other factors after the sound demo with my review of the Shure Ionic 50, but for now as usual, put on your best headphones or earphones and take a listen for yourself. Welcome to GI Chow. background sounds and see whether you can hear me clearly over the background sound or whether there is any clipping of the beginning or end of words. Now the Bayer and Sennheiser are not populist but neither are they from the same faction. They represent completely opposite ends of the audiophile spectrum. The open back Circumoral DT990 Pro recently popularized by gamers and YouTubers like KSI or JJ Olatunji is with the closed back DT770 and semi-open 880, one of the most recognizable studio headphones in the world. Now the HD600 on the other hand, is probably the most recognized audiophile reference headphone in the world, aimed at well-heeled music lovers looking for an even-handed balanced sound rather than the more popular consumer bass oriented or boom-inted V-shaped sound signatures. Now in terms of sound, the Shure is straddling these camps and as we'll discover, more or less successfully incorporate sound characteristics from both, even though by their very nature, the DT990 and HD600 are a bit like matter and antimatter, in that certain characteristics can't coexist in the same place at the same time. The £115 DT990 Pro's most obvious characteristic is its prominent and incredibly detailed treble. It's fast, so not harsh or sibilant, but it's just too bright, it's too much in quantity. It puts treble under the magnifying glass, so while not the most natural or realistic representation, it's very resolving of details. It has a similarly fast bass with good quantity and speed or impact, though not the resonant reverberance of a closed back. The other big characteristic is that the mids are recessed, so vocalists are just a bit too far back in the mix. Now, if you only listen to the consumer grade headphones before, you may not notice this, and they will just sound amazing. Rather like super bright TVs that are instantly impressive in a showroom and where the salesman can point to certain clearly noticeable features. In fact, after time, you realise that it's not what the music is in fact supposed to sound like. 
In reality, it's great for picking out recording issues like a high noise floor or hiss, but it's like a magnifying glass or stethoscope. The open back design gives it a good sound stage. And ironically with a DT-990 though, you can feel somewhat tethered by the inertia of the weighty core cable. The Sennheiser is almost completely the opposite. The treble is perfectly balanced. It's resolving and fast, almost electrostatic fast, without being too much in quantity or analytical picking apart the music. The bass is its main failing, being fast but not extending very deep and being even less in quantity than the DT-990. And so on occasion, not all the time, unsatisfying for genres that rely on deep or heavy bass like EDM and rock. Now the mids are where the sends really shine, having arguably one of the best representations of any headphone in the world, up there with electrostatics and the most expensive dynamics. Clear, natural and lifelike. I've turned my head listening to these, thinking someone was in the room. Soundstage wise, these are considered fairly narrow, despite being about as open as you can get, that this never really detracts from the music. So now at last we have the language to be able to consider the shores. These have a punchy extended bass like the DT990, natural mids like the HD600, and a very resolving but not sibilant or harsh treble, which is more present than the Sennheiser, perhaps unnaturally so, but comfortably below the sometimes ear piercing level of the DT990. Bass extends to sub bass well in Hans Zimmer's Why So Serious, for example. However, while adapt sounds shows them to be flat, I sometimes felt they didn't quite deliver a satisfying amount of mid bass, particularly when used wirelessly. Now switching A and C on improves the bass noticeably and combined with a narrow deep bass boost via the Shure Play App equaliser, I could bring the mid bass to good level. However, unfortunately the EQ only applies to music files played through the app and not streaming services. I could also get a satisfying bass response by driving them wired while powered on. So while the Shure clearly has the potential to be a great sounding headphone, the current implementation means it doesn't fully satisfy my tastes for my typical wireless streaming use case. Moving on to comfort, despite the very comfortable leather pads, we can't get around their 334 grams weight and closed back design which warms up one's ears. My medium sized head needed the headband extended to seven of the 10 clicks, so big heads beware. Like the old wired Shure SRH840, the headband is quite flat, so it creates a hot spot on the crown, which for me was only made manageable by the support from the clamping force. And over more extended listening sessions, I found myself repositioning the headband from time to time. Now considering features, ANC boosts bass, but also highlights the upper and lessens the lower tones in male vocals. So Sinatra's voice sounds a little more natural with ANC switched off. Now the ANC control is a slider with off rather unsatisfyingly in the middle point. Since while there's a bit of a click there, it's very easy to slide past to one of the extreme positions of ambience or ANC. Now the slider may loosen up over time, making this less of an issue. The ANC performance is on par with the Soundcore Life Q30, but not class leading like the Sony WF-1000 XM3. It adds a little hiss, but as we talked about, also some much needed heft to the bass. So my preference is to keep ANC turned on, at least when used wirelessly. Now unlike the other two, of course, with a sure no amp or wires are required. And I can't really undervalue the effect of freedom on one's enjoyment of music. So in summary, the Shure is like a more convenient but slightly less comfortable HD600, sharing that headphone's very natural mids, but with some of the DT990 studio monitoring characteristics, with bass extending down further to sub bass and a more analytical treble. Wirelessly, at least though, it has less mid bass quantity and punch than either, which while I found unsatisfying on occasions, some may appreciate for not assaulting their senses. I personally do like my senses assaulted now and again. Now in all aspects other than wireless mid bass level then, the Shure really performs very well. However, 
whether it's additional clarity, detail and premium materials make it preferable over much cheaper Bluetooth ANC offerings like the Syncore Live Q30 and MPOW 817 is something only you can design and I've got another video on recordings of those. So hopefully the threads of the story have come together with ending that's in the main happy. A good first attempt from sure with room for improvement in their next iteration. But do let everyone know what you think in a comment below. And if you've got value, please do take a second to like or subscribe to support this video on the channel. I'll post a separate video with the full sound recordings of these three so you can get a better idea of how the sound differs. But for now, you all stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye.